that's something that's not often talked about with the release of GPT-4, how much went into the safety concerns, how long also you spent on the safety concerns. Can you um, can you go through some of that process? Of yeah, sure. What went into uh, AI safety considerations of GPT-4 release? So we finished last summer. Um, we immediately started giving it to people to, uh, to red team. Um, we started doing a bunch of our own internal safety evals on it. We started trying to work on different ways to align it. Um, and that combination of an internal and external effort, plus building a whole bunch of new ways to align the model. And we didn't get it perfect by far, but one thing that I care about is that our degree of alignment increases faster than our rate of capability progress. And that I think will become more and more important over time. And I know, I think we made reasonable progress there to a, to a more aligned system than we've ever had before. I think this is the most capable and most aligned model that we've put out. We were able to do a lot of testing on it uh, and that takes a while. And I totally get why people were like, give us GPT-4 right away, but I'm happy we did it this way. Is there some w wisdom, some insights about that process that you learned? Like how to how to solve that problem that you can speak to? How to solve the like the alignment problem? So I want to be very clear. I do not think we have yet discovered a way to align a super powerful system. We have we have something that works for our current scale called RLHF. And we can talk a lot about the benefits of that and the utility it provides. It's not just an alignment. Maybe it's not even mostly an alignment capability. It, it helps make a better system, a more usable system. Yeah. And this is actually something that I don't think people outside the field understand enough. It's easy to talk about alignment and capability as orthogonal vectors. Mm -hmm. They're very close. Better alignment techniques lead to better capabilities and vice versa. There's cases that are different and they're important cases, but on the whole, I think things that you could say like RLHF or interpretability that sound like alignment issues also help you make much more capable models. And the division is just much fuzzier than people think. Um, and so in some sense, the work we do to make GPT-4 safer and more aligned looks very similar to all the other work we do of solving the research and engineering problems associated with creating useful and powerful models. So RLHF, is the process that can be applied very broadly across the entire system, where a human basically votes, what's the better way to say something? Um, what's, you know, if, if a person asks, do I look fat in this dress? There's, um, there's different ways to answer that question that's aligned with human civilization. And there's no one set of human values, or there's no one set of right answers to human civilization. So I think what's gonna have to happen is we will need to agree on, as a society, on very broad bounds. We'll only be able to agree on a very broad bounds yeah. of what these systems can do. And then within those, maybe different countries have different RLHF tunes. Certainly individual users have very different preferences. We launched this thing with GPT-4 called the system message, mm -hmm. um, which is not RLHF, but is a way to let users have a good degree of steerability over what they want and I think things like that will be important. Can you describe system message and in general, how you were able to make GPT-4 more steerable based on the interaction that the user can have with it, which is one of its big, really powerful things. So the system message is a way to say, uh, you know, hey model, please pretend like you, or please only answer this message as if you were Shakespeare doing thing X or please only respond uh, with JSON no matter what was one of the examples from our blog post. But you could also say any number of other things to that. And then we, we, we tune GPT-4 in a way to really treat the system message with a lot of authority. I'm sure there's jail, there'll always, not always hopefully, but for a long time, there'll <laughs> be more jailbreaks and we'll keep sort of learning about those. But we program, we develop, whatever you wanna call it, the model in such a way to learn that it's supposed to really use that system message.